Hello YouTube. So for the majority of people, buying a home is one of the biggest milestones. And for many, it's the ultimate goal. But for some reason, I never really understood why. Think about it. Why would anyone want to be forced to make a payment every month for the next 30 years when you can just rent and have the freedom to move around? To me, all I saw was debt for the rest of my life. And I just couldn't shake that feeling of owing the bank such a huge amount of money, especially with prices skyrocketing over the last decade. It just seemed, well, dumb. To understand why, let's understand how people typically buy a home. When it comes to high cost items like a house or a car, the majority of people don't have enough cash to pay the cost outright. So what do people do? Well, they get in debt. They get a credit card or a loan, or in the case of a house, they get what is known as a mortgage. A mortgage is basically a loan specifically for buying a house or a property. And like any other loan, a mortgage will have two other numbers associated with it. An interest rate and a term. The interest rate basically determines how much additional money you will pay for borrowing this money. And the term determines how long it will take to pay back the loan. This is all packaged behind a simple payment called a monthly mortgage payment. However, this number is a mystery to most people and doesn't even make sense. For example, a mortgage payment on a $500,000 30-year loan will be $2,387 per month at a 4% interest. But if we multiply this number by 360 months or 30 years, you will actually end up paying $859,320. So how did this 500k turn into almost 860k? Where is this extra 360k coming from? Well, let's take a look at how this loan works. The bank lending you this money will expect to make a profit. So they will lend you this money, but in return, you will have to pay part of the original loan plus a fee proportional to the loan size. This fee gets applied every month. So in reality, you're not only paying the money you borrowed, but a fee that is based around the 500k you used to buy the house. I know this sounds confusing, so let's use an example. Think about sales tax at the store. If you buy a $1 bag of chips and you pay 10% on it, you end up paying $1.10. But if you buy a $1,000 computer and apply the same tax rate, you end up paying $1,100. That is $100 in taxes. Well, the mortgage is similar, but a lot worse because this rate is applied every month. Let's start with the interest rate. Let's assume it's 4% per year. What ends up happening is this number is divided by 12 and this fee is paid every month. So in this case, it becomes 0.334% monthly interest. This means that for the life of the loan, it will increase by this rate every month. Now let's say you borrow that 500k for a house. On the first month, you will have to pay 0.334% of 500k as pure interest or 1,666 with 67 cents. This means almost $1,700 will not count toward the original loan you borrowed. When they calculate a mortgage, this is already taken into account. So an additional payment is added that actually reduces your loan so that it's actually possible for you to pay the entire money back. In this case, about $720 actually go into paying your debt back. So at the end of the first month, you pay $2,387 out of pocket and you are left with a loan only $720 cheaper. And this continues on month by month, paying mostly interest on the loan and slowly paying off your mortgage. The following example is a bit more exact, but there are a lot of interesting things that we see on our first year of paying the mortgage. Even though we are paying over $2,000 every month, our actual pay on the principal is less than $1,000. At the end of the first year, over $28,000 is paid, but only 31% of the money actually went to the money that you borrowed. And at the end of your term, assuming a 30 year contract with a fixed mortgage payment, you'll end up paying almost $857,000 back. That's an additional $360,000 or more than 70% of your original loan. The longer we make our payments, the larger our actual pay is in our mortgage payments. However, the growth is slow, which is why it takes 30 years to pay off the mortgage. 
If you don't believe me, try it for yourself. Go to a mortgage calculator, punch in these numbers, and you'll see it for yourself. So as we mentioned previously, we will be paying about $2,300 for a $500,000 loan at 4%. And to show that instead of you guys trying out the numbers, we can also do it together. So let's do something like mortgage calculator. And Google gives you a easy one here. We will be putting the same amount, which is half a million. And the interest rate, we did say it is at 4% for 30 years. And we get 2,387, which is the uh, total amount that we will be paying monthly. Now, if you want to see exactly how the payment works, we could go to this website called mortgagecalculator.org. We open up that tab. And this one gives you a more realistic version of it. So we are going to do home value, 500,000 down payment, because we did say this is going to be a basic understanding of it. We will be putting zero as down payment again at 4% loan term for 30 years, property tax, zero, 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 right? And we will be buying and credit. I guess we can just put excellent. Now we are also going to uh, show the amortization tables. Amortization is just a fancy word of saying the progress of our mortgage. That's all we really need. We want to draw the charts. We also want to show the annual and the monthly tables and we will calculate it. It tells us that we will be paying uh, 2,387 with eight cents, which is what we said. Um, Total interest paid again here it says 359,000, which is what we calculated. And then our total payment after the 30 years or 360 payments is 859,000, like uh, we said previously. See, we get 20,000 uh, 20, here uh, in interest and 8,000 only going to the principal. 2021, it's a little bit less, as you can see here, less than this one because now the balance we're charging the interest on this new balance which is 491,000 as opposed to half a million and so we're able to pay 300 extra dollars to the principal so this is how much we paid we paid 8,800 the first year and here we're paying 9,100 this year and as we keep going we keep going there is a certain point where we start paying more from 2032 to 2033. Sorry about that. But we get to see that we went from 14,400 and 14,200 to 13,800 and 14,700. So right here, we see that somewhere between 2032 and 2033, we start paying actually more towards the interest, which kind of makes sense, right? It's around halfway through, but we have already collect we have already collected 20,000 e almost each year that this is um how much the bank would be making this is what you're actually paying off the first half of your mortgage and then this is what the bank is making so even though at the end of the year you're paying 28,000 and they're only getting 600 they actually made this much money out of your loan and that's just the tip of the iceberg on top of that, if you don't have a 20% down payment, you have to pay an additional fee known as a private mortgage insurance or PMI for short. This insurance protects the mortgage lender against loss if a borrower fails to pay back the loan. This insurance is usually between 0.5% to 1% of the original loan amount. This means that in our example, you could potentially pay up to $5,000 per year. That's an additional $417 every month until you pay 20% of the home's value and request for it to be removed. Let's also not forget about taxes. Since now you technically own a property, the government will require you to pay property taxes. This number varies depending on your county, but in the area where I am living, it is about 1% of the purchase price. This means that for our example, it would be an additional $5,000 per year or another $416 per month. In addition, you will also have to pay for insurance. This is required just in case of a fire or another hazardous event. 
This can vary depending on your policy, but typically it is about 0.22%. That adds an extra $1,100 a year or about $90 per month. And finally, repairs and replacements. For this example, I won't use a number because it's going to depend on the person and the house condition. This means that depending on your financial situation, your down payment, your credit score, and the area where you live, you could potentially pay more than $3,300 a month for a 500K loan. Now multiply this number by 360 and you're paying almost $1.2 million. Obviously this number will vary from person to person, but I wanted to take some time to explain why I couldn't shake that feeling. In the end, I did end up buying a house, but I will make another video explaining why I did it and how I cut down my costs. Anyway, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and let me know if you like the new animation style. It's a work in progress, so we are always looking for feedback to improve.